So when we talk about signal transduction in plants, one of the most common examples is etiolation. Now, a signal transduction is a cell that's responding to a specific signal. And within signal transduction, we have three steps. We have the reception of the signal, we have the transduction of the signal, and we have a response. And we're going to understand signal transduction through the example of etiolation. Now, etiolation is a plant's morphological adaptation for growing in the dark. So when we think about plants that grow in the dark, one of the most famous examples is a, a potato. Now, if we leave a potato in a dark spot, in dark area for a long period of time, we'll notice tiny sprouts, these tiny little shoots starting to grow on the potato. Now, if the potato was underground and it was growing these shoots, these stems, these stems would begin to elongate. And it would reach a certain point where these stems would reach above the soil, so they'd be above ground and exposed to the sunlight. Now, etiolation is growing in the dark, but once you're exposed to the sunlight and you're above ground, that's de-etiolation. So once that potato is exposed to the sunlight, that's de-etiolation. That's when we'll see the greening of the plant, that we'll see more chloroplasts being produced, um, and then etiolation is growing underground. So if we take a look at how deetylation begins, the first step is reception. And what are we receiving? We are receiving light. So when we think about that potato, that potato, it starts growing, uh, it's experiencing etiolation, and it starts growing the stem. And that stem will continue to elongate until it reaches the surface. So if we have, let's, let's say that this is the ground and this is our potato over here and our potato starts growing this stem. And this entire process, while it is above, while it is below ground, is the tiolation. Tiolation. But once that shoot reaches above ground, and it's exposed to the sun, it is now undergoing deetylation. So once it's above ground, the phytochromes on that stem will receive light. Okay? Once the stem is exposed to light and that phytochrome is activated by the light, the cell will undergo a pathway, a signal transduction pathway. And we know that in the first step of a signal transduction pathway, the first step is reception. So we've received light. What happens after we receive the light? Okay, so we know that whenever we have a receptor, once it is activated, it can cause the activation of secondary messengers. So if we take a look here, once the light activates the phytochrome, Phytochrome will then activate a secondary messenger known as CGMP. That's the first thing that it will activate. The second thing that will happen is that the calcium channels will be opened up due to the activation of the phytochrome. When the calcium channel opens up, the calcium concentrations within the cell will start to increase. Now, once the calcium 2 plus concentration begins to increase, this activates a specific protein kinase inside the cell. So that's what the calcium 2 plus is doing. But the secondary messenger, CGMP, that will activate a different protein kinase. Okay, so what happened is that we received light because the stem elongated above the ground the phytochrome became activated, then the phytochrome activation resulted in the activation of the secondary messenger known as CGMP, and CGMP activated the protein kinase. And we also know that secondary messengers, they amplify the response. And the C, uh, calcium 2 plus uh, channel opened, the concentration increased, 
and another protein uh, kinase was activated. And this was the transduction pathway. So we looked at reception, and this is the transduction. Now we have the response. So we know that these two protein kinases have been activated, but these two protein kinases both have a different job. This protein kinase, protein kinase number two, is responsible for post-translation uh, response. So what that means is that once the protein has already been translated, then th this protein kinase applies to those proteins. So what happens is that this protein kinase, it will phosphorylate the proteins after they have been translated. And the phosphorylation of those proteins, so we can see this protein over here, it's been phosphorylated. This phosphorylation can cause a change to the protein, which alters its function. Um, and that function will correlate to the reception that we received. Now, this protein, protein kinase number one, is responsible for the transcriptional change. So this is before uh, translation and transcription has occurred. And what happens is that the transcription factor, it will bind to specific regions which will alter the protein that is being produced. And we know that if it's an activator, it'll activate uh, a specific kind of protein. If it's a repressor, it'll deactivate a specific kind of protein. So this uh, protein kinase, it will, uh, bi it will bind at the during transcription and will affect which protein is being produced whereas this protein phosphorylates uh, the proteins that have already been translated. Now, this uh, response results in detilation, which is the greening response of proteins. And what happens is that after we've received that signal of light and this entire process has occurred, the plant, um, the plant becomes aware that it is receiving sunlight so it starts producing leaves, it starts producing chloroplasts, and the stem elongation slows down because that is not really required anymore. This, the plant is now going to focus on producing leaves and chloroplasts. So if we take an overall look, we can see that during um, etilation, at etilation, the plant is the the plant. For example, a potato is growing underground. Once the stem elongates to above ground, it receives it receives that uh, light. It receives that light, and the phytochrome becomes activated from the light, which results in the transduction process, which is two separate processes, and these both of these processes must occur for detilation. The calcium 2 plus channels open, the concentration increases, which activates protein kinase number two. Uh, the second uh, transduction pathway that occurs is the secondary messenger uh, CGMP is activated, which activates another protein kinase. And each of these protein kinases have a different job. This one is for the transcription stage. This is post-translation phosphorylation. So this one will phosphorylate the proteins that are produced which alters their uh, form and function. This one, uh, the, the protein kinase number one, will affect which, uh, trans, uh, which proteins are activated or deactivated because this occurs at the transcription stage. And this is just an example of a potato. So we see the elongation of the stem. Uh, this is before exposure to light. And once that stem reaches above ground and it receives the sunlight, that detilation signal transduction pathway will occur. We see that the stem is no longer elongating. Uh, that, that process has slowed down because the plant is now focusing on producing leaves, producing roots, uh, chloroplasts, and etc. So this is the process of how signal transduction occurs and we use detilation de to understand how there's there are three steps so there's reception there is transduction and there is a response and all three of these steps make up signal transduction in plants